Okay, go ahead. So um, today we have the pleasure to listen to Bruno Ziliotto. Pleasure, and pleasure. pleasure to announce him, my uh, colleague and co-author. So Bruno is uh, known for having worked on the uh, Markov decision process, stochastic games, differential equation, and more recently, profit inequalities. And mainly for his counterexample and also for positive results sometimes. So we have the pleasure to hear him today speak about absorbing games with incomplete information and the Mertens conjecture. So you have one hour. Okay, so thanks for the invitation and hi everyone and thank you for being there. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, there are some stochastic games with a uh, long duration and um, and more particularly about um, a re result about existence of limit value in some uh, specific class of stochastic games. And um, oh, sorry, I, okay, okay, yeah. So uh, I will uh, first uh, do um, uh, an extended uh, introduction where I will just um, uh, recall the framework of uh, Merton's conjectures um, in, a, in an informal way and um, what are the main known results and um, what, what is my uh, contribution to this uh, literature. And then I will go to the, um, to the, for, uh, to the formalism and I will, um, uh, I will, uh, and then I will uh, present the proof. Sorry, I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to read. Okay, yeah, so yeah, I have this, thank you. Uh, so, uh, and then I will uh, explain the, so, the proof and uh, give some uh, perspective. Okay, so what uh, very generally, what is a circus game? So you have uh, two players that are uh, adversary. And so they play repeatedly a zero sum game and the zero sum game may uh, change uh, from one stage to the other uh, according to uh, player's action. And so uh, really sp speaking at, um, at each stage, uh, player choose uh, simultaneously uh, some action. And uh, action and current state, they will determine the stage payoff. So player one gets the state payoff while uh, player two gets the opposite. And then a new state is, uh, is drawn uh, from uh, some distribution that uh, is a function of uh, current state and uh, action. So it's like a controlled uh, Markov uh, chain controlled by, uh, by two players. So for instance, you can imagine that you are playing uh, repeatedly the, the rock, scissor, paper game. And uh, the rule is that uh, if, um, if the rock uh, eats scissors then the scissor is broken and you cannot use uh, uh, in the remaining stages, or maybe the, uh, the scissor is broken with priority one half and so on and so forth. Or maybe if you win the 10, 10 times in a row, your uh, opponent is uh, really disappointed and he just leaves the game. Or, or is there are many, many ways you can see this uh, state uh, evolving. And uh, so, so, so far, I, I, I didn't tell uh, anything about, um, about information. Uh, and uh, of course, um, this is a general framework, but then you can be more specific and you can assume, for instance, that uh, Maybe players know the state, maybe they know the action, or maybe they get signals about it. Or maybe these signals are symmetric or asymmetric. You can also uh, give um, assumptions on the dynamics of uh, the state. So maybe um, once you leave uh, the initial state, you get absorbed, so it's an absorbing game. Uh, maybe uh, you, on the contrary, uh, your, um, your state will have an ergodic structure, so it will always come back uh, to the same states. Maybe players play in turn, or maybe they play simultaneously, and so on and so forth. And you can also imagine a topological assumption on, um, on states, on action, finite, compact, measurable. So this, this uh, stochastic game framework can be split into like uh, hundreds of uh, different models. And uh, in this talk, I will only talk about finite state space, uh, finite action sets, and uh, fin finite um, signal sets. So just a few uh, very, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So just a, a few important uh, models. Uh, so of course, the se seminal model of Chaplet, which uh, concerns um, uh, stochastic games where uh, state is observed and action is observed. So I will refer to them, uh, to, to it at standard. Uh, the Oman and Machler model in which um, um, the state never moves, but players uh, don't know it. And they get uh, just one private signal at the outset of the game. And uh, then there were many other models, and this led to a general uh, formulation of uh, stochastic games with signals. Where ba basically, everything is possible. So, so at each stage, you get, uh, you get a signal that uh, may be private for each player. And uh, you may not know action. You might know the state. And it, it kind of encompasses all the previous uh, models. 
<coughs> and this were uh, this on this model that the Merton's conjecture were uh, sta stated. So don't, don't hesitate to, to stop me if you have any question. So I, I give a I, I give one slide just to explain why um, there's uh, or to recall why there's some game is not just about um, uh, solving uh, elegant math problems. It's uh, it's also uh, prominent in uh, in game theory because um, it's uh, first a good uh, a good benchmark for non zero sum games. So there's are zero sum case. So if you if you want to develop a new theory, it's uh, it's convenient to first test it on zero sum case because there is a uniqueness of existence of Nash equilibrium and uh, Things are more uh, simple. Uh, it's also a well-known tool to build uh, cooperation and punishment uh, equilibrium uh, in non-zero sum ga uh, games. So, like, uh, you agree to play something that is good for everyone. I mean, if someone uh, deviates, uh, you you punish uh, punish them in the in the spirit of um, of uh, fault theorem. And uh, also, uh, there are many recent develop developments about optimization in adversarial environment, where um, you have one one um, decision maker that has to take decisions in an environment that he does not know, and he does not even have a, a Bayesian uh, prior about uh, the components of the environment. And then he can consider that uh, actually there is uh, an adversarial uh, nature that uh, chooses the environment. And that is playing against this uh, nature, and then it's, it can be uh, modeled as a, as a zero sum game. And you also have um, uh, concrete applications so for uh, security games uh, involving uh, player one that wants to defend a, a facility and player two that wants to invade it or that wants to steal something. And so uh, there are also uh, a direct situation where uh, that you can model as zero sum games. Okay, so this, this uh, was for the justification of. Uh, importance of a zero-sum game. Uh, and I will introduce the main object, uh, object of uh, this talk. So um, you are in a stochastic game. There are many stages. How do you aggregate the, the payoff? So a classical way is to consider that uh, the game duration is uh, n, and uh, you take as a payoff uh, the average expected payoff over the n stages. And you can call the value of this game vn. Or uh, maybe players have a preference for uh, present versus future. So there is a discount factor, lambda. And uh, you can uh, define a payoff as a discounted sum. So game is infinite, but there is a discount. And then the value of, uh, of this uh, game is, uh, is, uh, is v lambda. <coughs> so then, um, so in, um, of course, there are many situations that have a very long duration. Uh, so, uh, if you want to study uh, zero sum games with long duration, uh, basically it corresponds to n being very large or lambda being very small. Um, and uh, you want, um, and you would like to give a solution to uh, games with long duration. So, what could be a good candidate? Well, you you take this value of the n stage game and you make n goes to infinity, and you say, well, if pairs are rational as the game is very long, then pair one should get the limit of the n, and pair two should get uh, the, the opposite. And you can say the same thing with the discounted, uh, discounted values. Now, of course, for this, to say that, you need uh, to, uh, that both these objects converge. And in addition, you would like that uh, they, uh, the limit coincide. You would like that your modelization does not depend on the fact that uh, pairs are discounted uh, or not. And another question that uh, people have investigated is, um, OK, so maybe VN converges and VLambda converges, but still, strategies that are optimal here and uh, here may depend heavily on uh, the duration of the game and on the discount factor. Uh, but maybe players don't know, actually, what is exactly their discount factor and what is exactly the duration of the game. So you would like to have a robust strategy in which players uh, perform uh, well, even if they don't know the exact duration of the game or the exact discount factor. And so this question is, uh, what is written there? So can, uh, can a player guarantee uniformly in time uh, uh, some payoff? And which payoff? What is the maximum that can guarantee? Uh, so without knowing uh, the duration of the game, this is what uniform means. So the game theoretic motivation is to understand uh, long games where players are patient. Uh, but uh, this type of question is also connected to uh, important problems in other parts of uh, mathematics. So, for instance, uh, if you take a continuous uh, analog of these uh, questions, um, you, you can show uh, that um, sometimes um, uh, these values that satisfy the partial differential equations that are co called uh, 
Hamilton Jacobi equations. And these PDEs are studied independently uh, in mathematical physics. And the, the, there, is, uh, there are papers where basically uh, uh, people uh, prove existence of uh, solutions of these PDEs using uh, games. Uh, and also other papers where people um, study uh, the limit behavior of uh, this Hamilton Jacobi equation using the game theoretic interpretation. So, so this, um, this problem is interesting for to understand long games, but it has also uh, other application in, uh, in, in other parts of, uh, of uh, mathematics. So let me now uh, go to the formulation of the Mertens uh, conductor. So Mertens uh, uh, conjectured some 30, 40 years ago that um, uh, both VLM, VN, VLM down and VN uh, should converge to the same limit. So in some sense, uh, the answer to this three question are positive. And uh, secondly, that um, in terms of um, uniform guarantee, when prior one is more uniform than prior two, then prior one uh, can guarantee uniformly in time the limit value. And uh, this uh, conjecture were, were actually um, uh, um, motivated uh, many works uh, in the field. And uh, I won't be able to, to quote all the work that has been done on the topic. But let me just say that it's the two uh, seminal models that I uh, talked briefly about in the previous slides. So namely, uh, standard stochastic games um, uh, and the repeated games with incomplete information on both sides. So record that it means that uh, here state and action are perfectly observed. And here the state does not move, but players don't know what is the state. Uh, here, the Matton's conjecture were proved to, to hold. And they were uh, also uh, disproved uh, in general, so by uh, uh, stochastic games with public signals examples. So meaning that uh, players don't know the state, they know the actions, but and at each stage, uh, they get a signal, uh, a public signal on the state. So it's more if you try to relax these results and uh, instead of assuming that players uh, know the state, uh, they, uh, they get public signals out on it, uh, the Merton conjecture uh, failed to hold. And actually both, like uh, there is no limit value and this is uh, not uh, true either. So of course, uh, this is not the end of the story. Uh, there are still many models in which um, uh, we don't know whether the Merton's conjectures uh, hold. And so th this is, uh, one of the motivation of, um, of, uh, of uh, my, my work today. And actually uh, in, um, in literature, uh, there has been this idea, uh, so uh, in several papers that um, uh, Merton's conjecture should, uh, should hold when uh, information is irreversible. So it's a bit difficult to define what irreversible means, but I will only give uh, some examples. So for instance, if you are in a repeated games with incomplete information on, on both sides, uh, the state does not move. So each thing that you learn about the states you will be useful. So pro you progress along the game, you progressively uh, learn uh, the, in the initial state. And so you cannot forget information, otherwise it's, uh, it's, a, it's a problem. So there is something in, in, in uh, uh, irreversible, like uh, mathematically, it's like a martingale, uh, martingale thing. So, that, so the, the game advances. Uh, at, at each stage, you are more and more informed. And there are uh, also, um, so, uh, so in this type of, of model, um, we, we expect that the Merton's conjecture uh, hold. And, um, and on the contrary, uh, for instance, in the public stochastic games uh, example, um, it could be that, okay, you first you remain at the initial state and you, you learn more and more about it. And then suddenly the initial state uh, changes and you, uh, you, the state is drawn randomly, uh, uniformly. And then all the information that you have learned so far is completely useless. So typically this kind of game is not irreversible. And so uh, this game does not have a limit value. So of course, it's only heuristics. There is no, not so much uh, theoretical stuff that uh, to provide uh, for this, but uh, it's, I think it's a li an idea that I, I really like. Uh, and I would like to maybe to, um, to add something to this idea, um, which is uh, something that I've been thinking uh, like uh, starting from my, my PhD. And I think it's probably the, um, uh, the most natural uh, and naive idea you can uh, have to, um, to prove that a game has a limit value. Um, I mean, naive meaning that if you have already read uh, many books about it, like if you are in your second years of PhD, uh, is, is, like, um, uh, is like basically you, when, you, when you have um, a, a stochastic game with incomplete information or with signals, uh, you can transform it into um, a stochastic games where uh, players know the state, 
but the, the state uh, aggregates all the information available. So belief of player one about the state, belief of player two about the state, belief of player one about actions, belief of uh, player one about the belief of uh, player two and so on and so forth. And this is what is called the new for our soul uh, belief space um, uh, by uh, Mertens, uh, Sorin and, uh, and Zamir. And uh, of course, this, this, this um, auxiliary uh, belief space can be uh, very complicated. Uh, but uh, in, uh, in many cases, it's uh, rather simple, like you don't climb the belief hierarchy uh, too, uh, too far. And, um, and so once you have written your stochastic game with signals into uh, stochastic games where with perfect observation of the belief, basically, you can try to discretize this uh, belief space and uh, show that uh, this uh, auxiliary stochastic game is close to a stochastic game with finite space. And then you can apply uh, the Dulé Colbert results and say that, okay, standard stochastic games have a value. So this game should have the value. And so the, the game on the belief space should also have a value. So it's a kind of a naive idea because it's just basically you, you have a result about a finite state space and you want to uh, use it for infinite state space. So you, you just discretize. And I've never unfortunately uh, managed to, to do that except uh, recently. So this is uh, the technique that I will use um, uh, on uh, absorbing games with uh, incomplete information on, on both sides. And uh, apart from the, the fact to, to add uh, one more model where uh, Metron's conjectures uh, hold, um, it's also, I think, give uh, some credit to this, uh, to this uh, discretization argument. And maybe it, um, it will be possible to extend this technique to other types uh, of, uh, of, of models. So I will explain uh, what is absorbing games with incomplete information on, uh, on both sides in, uh, in a few slides. But as I, uh, so this is the, the, basically the end of my, uh, of my introduction. As I, as I questions? So far. Okay. So let me now move to the, to the formal uh, model. So. So basically, um, you have a state space uh, omega. So action set i uh, for player one and uh, j for player two, and the type set k for player one and l for player two. And so it's an, ab no. absorbing, it's an absorbing game, meaning that um, there is only one non-absorbing state. And if you are in, a, if you leave the non-absorbing state, your game is essentially over, meaning that um, once you leave it, uh, the, the payoff will be the same forever and uh, whatever you do, and the state will never move again. So uh, formally, it means that you, so when you look at the transition of your stochastic game, so which maps a uh, pair of actions state to a distribution over uh, the state, it means that uh, whenever uh, omega is, um, is uh, absorbing, then uh, you, you, the, the probability that you, from omega you go to omega is, uh, is one. But you just, you just have to, to double click to open the PDF file. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, so the payoff function is um, is uh, also um, does not depend on uh, on actions once you are in an absorbing state. So basically, the only relevant state is the non-absorbing state. And you can see that your payoff function depends on your types on uh, on which state you are. So it can still depend on which absorbing state you you end up in, and of course on uh, on actions. And we have shown that uh, all these states are uh, finite. Are there questions on the on the model? So it's basically uh, an absorbing big game where uh, which was the payoff depend on two parameters, and uh, and player one knows the first parameter and the player two knows the second mm -hmm. parameter. Yeah. And you assume that the actions are observable. Yes. Yeah, actually, I will describe it. Uh, in the, I will describe the um, the processing of the game in the next slide. So. Nature will draw a uh, player one's type K according to P, uh, player two's type L according to Q. So um, player one uh, knows uh, his type and player two knows his type, but they don't know types of the other player. They still know P and Q, both. And then at each stage, uh, player one chooses some uh, IM, player two some uh, action JM. And uh, this is determined together with the types so, and the state, yeah. uh, the, the stage payoff. So it's player one's payoff and player two gets- Could you please positive. make it full screen? Yeah, sure. And uh, natural draws the omega m plus one according to the priority distribution uh, 
so uh, again, it's a control Markov chain, so it depends on uh, the current state and uh, and the pair of actions that have just been played. And the player knows the state and they know uh, the actions. So the only incomplete information is about the, the, the types. Now, a strategy uh, maps uh, available information into mixed actions. So at stage M, uh, player one knows his type and he knows also all the, um, all the previous stages and uh, all the, pre sorry, all the previous states and all the previous uh, actions. And uh, same thing for, um, for, uh, for player two. So then they, uh, at each stage, they, uh, strategy determines what, uh, what uh, players do in each situation. And uh, the, the set of uh, strategy of player one is edited by sigma, and the set of strategy of player two is edited by, uh, by t. So it's just the usual uh, way to define uh, strategies. And again, uh, I insist, so player knows the state, they know uh, fast actions, and uh, they know their type. And so uh, the, the end stage uh, repeat game is just the game where uh, your payoff is the expectation of the Cesar mean of your payoff. So determined by strategy of player one, strategy of player two, initial uh, P, initial Q, and uh, initial state. And the value is denoted by Vn of PQ uh, omega. And you have also the distance cut in game where uh, the value is uh, the discounted uh, expected um, mean of, um, of the payoff. And the value is edited by V lambda. And again, it depends on the distribution of types and on the, the state. And just um, so, the, so just for a quick review of literature, so I said that I, I wouldn't be able to, uh, to provide all papers about methods conjectures in the stochastic games. But if you restrict uh, to uh, absorbing game with uh, incomplete information on both sides, you can do some kind of exhaustive uh, list. So we knew that uh, methods conjecture uh, hold in um, when um, basically uh, there are only one type for each player, so it's standard absorbing game. So basically the type is uh, irrelevant. Uh, repeated games with complete information on both sides. I already talked about it. Uh, there is also um, a variation of the big match with incomplete information that has been extensively uh, uh, studied by uh, Sora. Uh, and um, there is uh, also uh, in the one side case uh, Rosenberg that proved the um, uh, existence of a limit value. Uh, sorry, actually, uh, I made a mistake here. It's only uh, existence of limit value that uh, that was proved. Um, and um, and also uh, Lee uh, generalized uh, the uh, the result of Sorin to some uh, more general class of of big match. So just to be sure, one side means that. Uh, Player one is uh, fully informed. Uh, so it means uh, formally that uh, player two set of types uh, is a singleton. So player two's type uh, doesn't affect the game. So all player one is fully informed and player two does not know the, the type. Okay, so here is the result. So uh, if you take an absorbing game with incomplete information of both sides, so uh, Merton's conjecture hold, meaning that V lambda and Vn converge to the, the same limit. And uh, when L is a singleton, uh, incomplete information on one side. Um, so for each epsilon, uh, player one has a strategy that guarantees uh, almost the value in uh, any game uh, up to epsilon, provided that n is sufficiently uh, large. So this result was uh, actually also also. Big. And so it, the, the proof is a bit long, so I will only uh, be able to sketch the proof that V lambda converges. Actually, we know that if V lambda converges, Vn converges. So this at least do. The trick for this, but I want time to want have the time to talk about this. This part. Um, has there any question before I, I go to the to the proof? Ah, uh, Bruno. Yeah. I have a question regarding what happens when L is not a singleton. Then uh, there is not necessarily such a strategy, or you do not know whether it exists. Merton Zamir, you don't, you know that it doesn't exist. I think that exists I would, no, I think, yeah, it doesn't exist. Okay, thanks. Okay, so approach, so you, you so, so as I said, the first thing is to write an equivalent stochastic game played on the beliefs uh, space. So the state space is uh, basically um, uh, player two's belief about player one's type, uh, player one's belief about player two's type and the state. 
And we assume that this is a new state variable. I will describe in one slide uh, what is uh, gamma e, but first uh, I just present a rough sketch. And the action sets will uh, be uh, delta of i uh, to the power k, meaning uh, that uh, player one can uh, choose his mix action according to, uh, uh, to his type because he knows it, and same thing for player two. Then uh, prove that uh, V lambda converges in uh, gamma e. And to this M, I use a discretization argument. So you discretize the, the, type, uh, the, the type beliefs to obtain some stochastic game with finite state space and a compact action sets. Now, this type of stochastic games may not have a limit value, but uh, if it's regular enough, it has by uh, work by uh, Bold, Gobert, and, and Vigeral, so about uh, definable uh, stochastic games. So limit value in the, the approximated uh, stochastic game gamma f exists. Uh, and then the last thing and uh, the most difficult is to prove that your approximation is um, is correct. So meaning that the discontinued values of uh, gamma e and gamma f are uh, are very very close. So this is a roadmap of uh, of the proof. So let me start with uh, gamma e. So uh, these are classical uh, definitions. So uh, you have uh, given a belief uh, p and some uh, uh, mixed action of uh, player one. Um, so this this um, x bar p of i is like the average action. It's the probability that um, that a player one plays i if he uses x as a strategy. So uh, this is like uh, uh, probability. of playing uh, uh, i, given that uh, state is, uh, sorry, type is, uh, is k. So this is like uh, the general probability of, uh, of playing i, if you sum. And this is just um, uh, the, 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 the posterior belief given that uh, the realized action was i um, and uh, the strategy was x. So it's just a bias, uh, bias rule. So it's just a posterior belief. Oh, sorry, I'm still not so used on. Uh, my tablet, yeah. Okay, so uh, the text that I will I've just written uh, will just disappear. So, but don't worry, it's normal. Uh, so, basically, uh, then gamma e is just uh, the so the game with uh, this state space, so this product. So this I already said, and the transition um, is the following. So imagine that uh, you are in um, in belief p q. The state is omega, player one plays x, player two plays y. Um, then uh, what is the priority that um, i is played? Well, it's just by definition x bar p of i. Action j is played is this probability. So, so um, when I, I and j are played, basically uh, the probability that you jump to omega prime is by definition this. And in this case, your uh, next uh, belief is just the posterior belief. So this is just transition given by bias rule and uh, the transition of your stochastic game. Now the payoff function is just the uh, expected uh, pay, uh, expectation of the payoff function. So it's uh, you sum over all the possible types. Uh, given the types, the probability that to play that player one plays i is this, that player um, two plays j is this, and then your payoff is uh, this. So it's just expectation. And in this new in this uh, new auxiliary stochastic game, the preview states and action are perfectly observed, and your states are belief, 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 and state. And action are uh, are the mixed uh, actions. Okay. So we call v lambda e the discounted value of uh, gamma e, and uh, there is a classic results that uh, is actually true in a much more general uh, framework. But that says that uh, the discounted value of the auxiliary uh, game is the same as uh, the original uh, game. And so the goal is to prove that uh, v lambda e uh, converges. 
And so, um, so for this, uh, I will uh, first maybe do a, a small drawing to explain uh, how, um, how I will approximate a gamma E. So I will approximate gamma E by a game gamma F, which has a finite state space. So I will um, I will draw the I will only consider uh, play, because everything is uh, is kind of symmetric. If I do something for player one, I can do it for player two. So I will only uh, look at the belief of uh, on player one's type. Okay. So imagine you have uh, so you have a simplex uh, delta of k. This is uh, delta of k. And I will uh, triangulate it. So we're using a regular uh, triangulation. And I will try it to be as regular as needed. So it's a triangulation that is uh, basically uh, with a small uh, step, um, a small uh, st step size. So So it's an alpha triangulation, meaning that uh, like uh, the distance between uh, the two points is uh, is alpha or smaller than uh, than alpha. And then, okay, I have uh, let's call uh, a PM uh, uh, so uh, player two's belief. about uh, player one's uh, type. So imagine that my uh, belief is like a PM at stage M. Um, basically, I want, to, um, I want to define an auxiliary uh, PM prime uh, that lies in the vertices of my triangulation. So what, what, what could I do? I could just... Um, so a first idea would uh, would be just to uh, project a PM on um, on the closest point of the triangulation. But if you do that, uh, it, it won't. Uh, so basically, you would say, okay, uh, this is PM. So, uh, so I will say that uh, PM prime is, uh, is this, this point. But if you do that, uh, you, you will make a half error at, uh, at each stage. But uh, alpha plus alpha plus alpha, even if alpha is small, it's uh, it's a lot. So, so it uh, typically uh, this does not work. It's like you know, it's not the same thing to say uh, there is a alpha probability that uh, a pandemic starts this year, or to say that there is zero probability that a pandemic starts this year. Unfortunately, sorry for the stupid joke. Uh, so basically, we are not going to uh, to do that. Um, so we are so we are going to to make something a bit more uh, a bit more uh, subtle. Uh, is we will consider that uh, we look at this point, a PM, and we'll decompose PM as a convex combination of this point, this point, and this point. So uh, so maybe this is uh, P one, P two, and uh, P three. And we will uh, write it as uh, a one uh, p one p one plus a two uh, p two plus uh, a three uh, p three. And then what we do is uh, we will basically uh, draw. So we will uh, we'll draw p m prime uh, at random, uh, but uh, the priority is that um, that p m prime 
is equal to uh, pi is exactly the coefficient. So I just compute at each stage the, the weights of pm on each of the vertices, and uh, I draw a, a p1, p2, or p3 according to these weights. Is it uh, clear? This is clear, but now you have to do it uh, somehow with the uh, uh, public lottery so that they know what is alpha one, alpha two. What is the next P1 if you want to make it with this as a stochastic game? I will, I will define the uh, formally the, the stochastic game okay. uh, in uh, one slide. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, uh, at the end, you, we, we will obtain a stochastic game gamma f on. Uh, on a p uh, times q uh, times omega, where this is like the uh, triangulation of uh, delta of k. And this is the one of delta of l. And I will now uh, define, uh, define it uh, for, uh, formally. The next slide. So I, I take some alpha and uh, p some alpha triangulation of uh, delta de k and q of delta of l. And so for each p in uh, delta of k, uh, I, can, um, I can say that it's a convex combination of uh, some point of the subsamplex uh, containing uh, p uh, in just a way. So this is just uh, the, same, the same thing, but in the, the general uh, case. And uh, OK, I do this for player one, but I can also do this for player two, and I will use the uh, same notation, so s. So basically, uh, this is uh, s for splitting of uh, P and the splitting of uh, Q. And, um, and basically, uh, the, um, uh, yeah. maybe, OK, Did I, maybe I forget to write what is S, basically. Um, uh, so it's exactly as I said. So basically, uh, the priority that, um, uh, that you draw uh, P will exactly be uh, IK of, uh, of, of P. Uh, and uh, so, so basically, uh, you you now you now have a stochastic game on uh, on a p times q times omega. Okay, your uh, your action states sets are the same as in the gamma e uh, delta of i to the power k and delta of j to the power l. Uh, and your transition row f now uh, is uh, is the following. Um, it's um, so so again uh, if you play x and y. The priority of playing A and J is uh, just given by the average, as in the previous model. Same thing for uh, the state. But now, uh, instead of uh, jumping from P to the posterior belief, I go from P to the posterior belief, and then I, uh, I split it. So this is uh, the, um, uh, this, uh, this thing here is uh, AK of. Uh, Uh, is the corresponding uh, a uh, a k of uh, of p prime? So it's a component of uh, of my posterior belief according to uh, my uh, my subsequent. Is it uh, clear now, Abraham? Or no, no. Uh, how do you make the splitting? Uh, you you want to make it a public splitting, right? So that they know what is the next uh, state. What I mean, I, I it's it's a classic game. I can I can say that the priority are this. No, but but but, but you computed the posterior, and now I am doing the splitting. But the other player has to know what was the splitting I was doing in order to view it no, as it's a, a new game. game. It's a new game. It's a different game. It's it's a, the, yeah. So Abraham, like, you you think you ask why is the value of this game similar to the value of the original game? Yeah, so, so I think you are kind of anticipating here. I, I just define a game gamma f. I just said yeah, this is my my game is uh, okay uh, when I. Uh, uh, so compared to the compared to the original game, uh, the game is uh, is the following. So you have. Uh, uh, you you have some p. Okay, then, uh, show for a minute. Show for the minute the next slide. Okay, yeah. Of 
So play one plays X, player two play Y. This produces a posterior belief. And then it is split according to the triangulation. Okay. Bruno, a collection no. of uh, posterior beliefs, no? For every I and J, there is a posterior, a different posterior belief. So for every I and J, there is a distribution. Uh, sorry, no, so for every I and J, there is a, a belief of pair one and belief of pair two, and and then you draw it again and you split you split it. Why don't you sum over I and J? In your formula, because you want to the probability of falling in P prime or Q prime, it has to be the sum over I and J, you no? Know, maybe. No, Bruno, look on the first term of the right hand side. So that's a function of I and J's. Oh, so you, you want to? It's not X and Y. It's I and J, no? I think I have to sum on, on I and J. And that's it. Oh, okay, oh, the expectation of that or what? Yeah, but, but, but the player observe I and J, so you can put I and J here, I think. No, 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 no. The probability ah, no, this... it's X, Y. I you should add I and J moreover to this. No, the probably there are two typos, Bruno. First, uh, you have the omega prime, should be omega prime in the left hand height. Um, go from PQ uh, omega to P prime Q prime omega prime. And then you should sum over i and j because different i and j can give you the same p prime q prime. Okay, sorry, I agree. So this is omega prime. Uh, agree. And uh, yeah, okay, you have to sum for a j. Okay. Sorry, sorry for that. So it's like okay, uh, it's like uh, the interpretation is like. Um, uh, if pair one plays X and pair two plays Y, then uh, IJ is drawn with priority um, uh, X bar of I and uh, Y bar of J. And um, uh, and then uh, the, this priority is the posterior belief, and then the posterior belief is split. Sorry for this mess. And then the, the payoff, uh, the, the, for the payoff function, you just uh, basically, uh, I mean, Basically, your state space compared to gamma e is just restricted. So you just restrict uh, your former pair function to uh, the vertices of, uh, of your uh, triangulation. OK, so, uh, so, so, so uh, let us have another second looking on this uh, equation. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the Q prime. You look who is from the original game. And then you look at the probability. And then the, okay. Okay. Okay, so. So this is a game with finite state space, a compact action sets. Of course, this is not enough to say that the game has a limit value. Um, because uh, there has been uh, an example of, uh, by Vigeral, but in this example, the, um, the transition function were, uh, were, uh, were not so regular. And, but here it's, uh, you only have, uh, you know, you have only uh, like posterior beliefs and uh, multiplication or division. So it's a very regular game. And uh, so it, you can show that uh, this, uh, this game indeed has a limit value just by applying some theorem in, the, in this paper. So the only thing that remains to prove is that the discounted value of gamma E and gamma F are, uh, are close to each other. So formally, uh, for each epsilon, um, uh, there exists some alpha uh, that for any triangulation that is uh, a small, uh, smaller than alpha, um, for, for each discount factor, uh, for each uh, starting point, uh, starting belief point and omega, uh, then the value um, in gamma E and the value in gamma F are, uh, are close, uh, close to each other. So what is important here is that the bond is uniform in lambda. So it's like uh, for every discounted game, uh, your approximation is uh, good, and the UIR term does not depend on, on lambda. So um, uh, 
<laughs> so actually, I will only do one inequality because pair one and pair two uh, play similar role. role. So I will only prove that uh, V lambda f is larger than V lambda e uh, plus uh, minus some, uh, some error term. And um, actually, there will be some issues when the, when the belief dynamics uh, um, uh, is close to the frontier of the, of the simplex. So that's why uh, it will be needed uh, some induction arguments uh, on the cardinality of types and the cardinality of L. So basically, what we are, we are going to do is that uh, is to say, OK, uh, if, if you are not close to the frontier of the simplex, everything is good. And if, you, if you are close, then this means that uh, morally, uh, my set of types has decreased, and then I can uh, reuse uh, the induction hypothesis. So this is what I wrote here. So the resistance is true when P uh, lies in the, in the frontier of, uh, of the simplex. OK, so I, I think at this point, I will make some uh, drawing again, and I hope that uh, this is uh, maybe clearer. Um, OK. So what we are going to do is, uh, is a coupling between, uh, the, uh, between gamma E, between the history uh, of, uh, of gamma E and the histories of uh, gamma F. So I will call uh, like a PM uh, again the belief uh, of uh, player two about uh, player one state uh, type so um, in uh, gamma e and pm prime the uh, so same belief but in gamma f and uh, i will um, i will consider uh, uh, some strategy sigma e uh, which is optimal for player one uh, in uh, gamma lambda e and uh, to f that is uh, optimal for player two in uh, gamma lambda f. And basically, what is the goal here? The goal is to, um, to copy sigma e. So sigma e is a strategy uh, for player one in, uh, in uh, gamma e that is uh, good. So this is lambda everywhere. So sigma e is a good strategy for player one in, uh, in the original game uh, gamma e. And so I want to transform it into a good strategy uh, of the game um, of player one in gamma f. And then I can deduce that v lambda f is greater than v lambda e. So, and the other term, of course, will be a function of uh, alpha. And so, uh, let's uh, let's do this on. Uh, on the, uh, so, I think I don't have. I mean, I was expecting this. I don't have that many time. So, I hope that my driving will already be uh, condensing. So again, I, uh, I make a triangulation of uh, delta of k. And uh, I will explain how uh, somehow uh, player, two, player one that is playing in uh, gamma f can follow the player one that is playing in gamma e. So I assume that there are like uh, three action, a, b, c. Um, and so, um, my, uh, my, uh, so, so we are at uh, stage m. OK, and uh, so at stage M, uh, uh, player, one, uh, player one plays uh, in gamma E some, uh, some action that I'll call X. So what happens then, uh, imagine that uh, I don't know, like uh, PM is, um, is like there. And uh, PM prime is like there. Now, uh, the fact that, uh, that player one plays x makes a splitting of uh, pm. So, for instance, uh, like there. Mm -hmm. 
this is like A, uh, B, and C. So this is a possible uh, split uh, next variables for player one in, uh, in gamma E. And uh, what, as a player uh, one in gamma F, I will do the, the following. I will try to mimic. So basically, the interpretation is that uh, I'm player one in gamma F. I'm, my belief is PM prime because uh, I, uh, I uh, sorry, uh, I made the mistake. It should, um, so the belief in, in, uh, in gamma F should be uh, in, uh, in the in suffix. And the, the yes. of the artist, yes, sorry. Yes. So let's say, uh, for example, it's there. This is uh, like uh, PM prime. So what I would do is that I would I would uh, play in such a way that um, my splitting will be uh, the translation of uh, of this uh, splitting. So basically, it will uh, it will have the following uh, uh, shape. If I play A, I will just uh, parallelize uh, uh, this uh, this one. And um, and same thing for if I play B or uh, or C. It will have uh, some, something like this. Sorry, so this is, uh, this is A, B, and C. So basically, I will select uh, X, X prime, such that. Um, So that uh, if I, uh, so that for all I, um, if I make the difference between uh, my uh, posterior belief when I play X prime and, uh, and uh, I was selected, This will be equal to uh, PM prime uh, minus, uh, uh, P, uh, minus PM. This is prime and So basically, um, at stage M, what is my error term? My, my error term is PM minus PM prime. And so um, when I play, uh, my error term between this and this will be uh, exactly the same. So this is, uh, this will be, uh, for example, imagine that A is selected. So this is uh, PM uh, plus one. And here this is uh, P, uh, uh, the, this is PM prime hat X prime, knowing that uh, uh, A was played. Okay, did you get this thing? You can always speak like that. Is it clear? Or... Not yet, but uh, in the border, it's not possible. No? What happens at the boundary? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So that, uh, that's why, uh, of course, in the border, it's not possible, but that's why I'm making an induction. So when I'm close to the border, uh, the, I can reuse uh, the induction. But I agree there, is a, there, is, there may be a problem in the border. And you yeah, want to the, small splitting. The, and small yeah, splitting. The, the additional splitting that uh, we didn't take care of, no? Yeah, the, but I have not finished my drawing. Yeah. I agree. That it cannot be clear yet. Um, OK, and then we can do some. Uh, we have some additional splitting like this. Because uh, basically, uh, you, you resplit in the game. So, so actually, your, maybe your actual uh, PM, uh, PM plus one prime is like that. But it's fine because uh, at the end of the day, what, uh, what will be the difference between uh, PM uh, plus one prime minus um, PM plus one. 
it will be the same as uh, the difference between uh, PM prime and uh, PM plus uh, some uh, some error term that is uh, just uh, white noise basically because okay. it will be um, it will be the difference uh, between uh, uh, PM plus one prime uh, minus uh, this thing so P prime uh, M uh, hat uh, X prime knowing that uh, I uh, I am was selected so action I am But this has expectation zero. So basically, at each stage, you you keep your in expectation, you keep the same error, but maybe you and you do an expectation zero error. And the hope is that when you uh, when you extend this formula, uh, so you extend this formula, you get uh, basically that the difference between uh, PM prime and PM is the sum of uh, variables that has expectation zero. And uh, some, I mean, sometimes, uh, uh, thanks to the law of large numbers, you can prove that such uh, such things are small. And uh, and this is essentially what. Uh, okay, so I have one minute left. Anyway, uh, did you understand uh, this uh, decomposition? Where, where do you use absorbing game? Yeah, uh, no, no, for, for the dynamics, you don't use it actually. No, you, you use it by the fact that probably I would guess that you use it when you allow com uh, compact action sets, and because it's an absorbing game, uh, so you could work just with the until the absorptions, just with the posteriors on the K and L, and you know that after many splits, basically you are approaching the boundary. Is not that the case? No, but the fact that you uh, approach the boundary. Uh, you I mean, there are two things. There are the dynamic on the state and the dynamics on the beliefs. When, when I say uh, reaching the boundaries, is uh, I talk about uh, beliefs. So maybe the, the belief, uh, I, no, I say, say the, from the state, you could have only one state change. Okay, so you, so you cannot uh, come back and forth and then uh, back to another state. Yes. Yes, and then on the belief you could apply, you could switch to the fact that you could work with compact action sets because the number of splittings that you have on the beliefs is basically finite each time you have some jump of the belief. Yeah. Okay. So, so the boundary. I, I cannot really answer. Uh, I, I would like uh, to just to finish uh, in okay. one minute and uh, then we can. Do. Okay. Anyway, what I just described, you can do it quite easily. You just write some formula. Basically, this is what I call the X prime. You can write down some formula. Uh, you can write down uh, also, uh, this is a, what I said about the fact that uh, the difference between uh, zero or terms correspond to, to, uh, to a term with expectation zero, whatever. Uh, I, I cannot do the formal couple coupling, but anyway. Um, I would just like to, to explain where absorbing uh, comes from. Um, so basically, the, the whole goal of, uh, of this approximation is to prove that the, um, that PM prime, so the, the belief in gamma f is close to the belief in gamma e. So you want to prove something like this, some result that the probability that uh, it's, uh, is large is uh, big O of epsilon. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, you, can, um, you, can, uh, you can write down a formula between PM prime and PM as a sum of terms that have expectation zero. And then you can uh, apply some uh, Martingale inequality. inequality. Uh, OK, that I can detail. But the whole point is that uh, at the end of the day, what you will obtain as a maturation of uh, this is something that depends on um, the, the L1 variation of uh, your, uh, your belief PT. So at the end, you will obtain some, uh, something like uh, this is smaller than the grid. Uh, times uh, the L1 variation of the Martingale of beliefs. But we don't know whether this L1 variation of belief is, uh, is uh, bounded or not. Because uh, if you have a Martingale, you know that the L2 variation is bounded, but you don't know if the L1 variation is bounded. So, so basically, here there is, um, so actually, I didn't manage to finish uh, the proof, but uh, the proof that I wanted to show you was only half of the proof, actually. So at the end, I, uh, 
um, I still missing some, uh, I, at the end, I will still uh, missing some results like this. So that says that in an uh, absorbing game with incomplete information on both sides, you, you can play epsilon optimally in such a way that the L1 variation of your belief is uh, not too large. And for this thing, you need, absor you need that your game is absorbing. If, uh, if the game is not absorbing, I don't know how to do it. So I would just like to, I just wanted to say uh, where actually the absorbing assumption uh, comes from. This is not something that I was planning to show because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not so easy to do, uh, but uh, you, uh, you, can, you can do that. Basically. So I'm sorry for, uh, for having overlapped uh, like, uh, like this. So I will, um, I will give up on perspective and uh, maybe answer your question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, for the, uh, Sorry, can, can, can you show the Question. previous slide for one second? Sorry? The previous slide. No, 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 no. The next one, when you write resulted, result, it remains to prove result admitted. What does it mean, result admitted? No, it was admitted for the talk because I, I knew I wouldn't have the time to do it. Oh, but, but you, it means that's a result. Yes. No, no. I, I have the proof. I can send it to you. I'm not. No, no. Yes, you meant omitted, not admitted. Ah, sorry. Yeah, admitted for the talk. Yes. Okay. The converges with the transform. This. So, so there is a Bruno, Bruno. So it is no. true that uh, if you fix lambda, then the approximation you did uh, works. In fact, so it just wants one. If you want, uh, when you want to to have lambda goes to zero, then you need these results. This is where you use absorbing game somehow. Sorry? No. No. If you uh, fix lambda, if you fix I lambda. want I want absorbing because I want to prove this. Yeah, I want to prove that ah, my, okay. my approximation is good. So I want to prove that my approximation is good. For this, I use uh, Doob's marching inequality, which gives me a bound on uh, this thing in function of the L1 variation of, um, of my martingale. But this error variation, I don't know whether it's uh, bounded or not. I mean, it could be, uh, it could be very high. It could be much larger than alpha. I don't know, uh, because there is nothing that says that uh, L one variation of Martingale's. Uh, uh, I mean, if you think about uh, like discretization of Brownian motions, uh, the L two, the L one uh, variation is of course uh, very high. So, um, so, but, but you, so you, that's why you need to uh, to construct specific type of strategy that will allow you to. Uh, this to hold, but this I was only able to do it for absorbing games. And wh what kind of, uh, how do you do your strategy? This thing? Just a quick idea of the strategy. So the, okay. Maybe I can answer uh, other questions and come back to this, because it could be a bit long. So. <laughs> Is there any other questions? So, so Bruno, does your approach extend applied to uh, recursive games? I, I really don't know actually. Um, uh, the, I mean, I I I, I finished this uh, very recently, and I I didn't have the time to investigate other models. But actually, yeah, I would love to see whether. Uh, you can uh, you can apply to to other models. Let me give an answer to I think an early question of Sylvan. It was how is the beach in Tel Aviv or in the Israel? So this picture is from this morning. What? Which picture? The background on my. Ah well. So, okay. No. <laughs> very clear, very clear water, very nice sea. You're all invited. Okay. As soon as there is no lockdown, we can. <laughs> <laughs> you could, Next, you could teach, let, you're teaching in Zoom, you could teach it from here. Yes, no that's problem. True, that's true, that's true. Bruno, you know my question. Okay, so, so thank you. Um, Thank you everyone for attending the, the talk. I will answer, of course, the last question, but 
I, I'm also apologize if I was a bit fuzzy sometimes. It just it was a very recent result and I was very excited about it. So I really wanted to present it. But maybe it was a bit early to, to present it. So anyway, um, um okay, so where is this? So oh, to, I see uh, I muted. I say it's very good that you presented it. Okay, thanks. Uh, so basically, as um, uh, the idea is to uh, to define uh, the notion of a concise uh, a concise uh, action. Uh, it means that uh, for all um, so epsilon concise, so there is some epsilon, and uh, concise action uh, epsilon concise action X means that uh, it. Um, um, uh, Sorry, that's not what I am. Okay. Sorry, so epsilon revealing action, sorry. Means that you 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 reveal, but uh, significantly, like your belief jumps from epsilon. So typically it will mean that uh, there exists uh, uh, there exists some uh, uh, there is some uh, k. Uh, X uh, I uh, knowing K is larger than one plus epsilon uh, X of um, like for instance the average X action. So I is an epsilon revealing action uh, with respect to uh, to X and P. Uh, if uh, this is true, so this means that um, there is uh, the component on K will typically uh, uh, jumps a lot, so like you you reveal, reveal a lot, and so um, um, given X in uh, delta of A uh, to the power K, uh, you will define uh, some uh, new X prime. As uh, intuition of X prime is like uh, okay. Um, uh, there is no point in uh, in revealing just a little bit in uh, in in, uh, in a game. Like if you um, if you just uh, reveal reveal a very small fraction, you could just play the average action, and it will, it will be uh, as good. So basically, the, the idea would be to transform X in just a way that the um, the action where, where you reveal a lot, you keep them with the same priority, and the other one you kind of uh, average uh, average them. You define the new mixed action uh, where um, uh, this will be uh, uh, x uh, bar uh, p of uh, non revealing uh, epsilon action knowing uh, k. So as I said, I distinguish between revealing action and uh, actions that are not uh, revealing. So all the revealing action, I keep them, keep them like this. The other one, I try to average them in some way. So I cannot, um, since uh, all this might be different, I cannot, uh, I cannot make, um, I cannot uh, compel the epsilon non-revealing action to be uh, exactly non-revealing. So I need, I do some average like this. And um, and basically, um, what I claim is that uh, uh, so if you take uh, sigma uh, an optimal uh, strategy in uh, gamma lambda, 
and you define uh, sigma prime such that uh, uh, sigma prime of uh, H it correspond exactly to uh, to this uh, prime thing applied to sigma H. So after I raise array, you do this uh, this transformation. Uh, then there are, then uh, two things. Uh, first, um, uh, sigma prime will be uh, like uh, I don't know ten epsilon optimal. Second thing, uh, the, it will generate uh, something that is. Uh, that can be bounded so, without square. So it can generate the L1 uh, martingale variation that is, uh, that is uh, uh, bounded by something depending only on epsilon. Um, and this thing, it will be, I don't use absorbing, but for this, I use absorbing basically. Uh, neither this nor this is so easy to do. I mean, yeah, you have to do some uh, some proof. But basically, the whole idea is that um, um, basically your strategy either it makes uh, significant jumps on the on the belief. But the point is that when you make significant jumps, uh, there is no so much difference between uh, putting a square here or not putting a square. So like okay, uh, if you like zero point twenty five to the Square is not so uh, so far from zero point twenty five, but if you, of course, if you have something very small and you want to compare it to its square, it's uh, it's an error story. So the um, the whole point is somehow to uh, stop revealing small and only reveal when it's needed. It's not as simple as that because you cannot just uh, you, you cannot uh, create a strategy that, that it's really like this. Like either you make huge jumps or you don't make uh, at all. But somehow you can do something in between that uh, that works. I mean, I know it's not a proof, but you you need a few pages for each of these things. I just I'm just giving the rough idea. I can send you the notes uh, if you want. Okay, I have a a question which is a uh, less technical. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we know the. the Who are you? The, what? Who are you? I don't know. Hello, um, Jérôme. <laughs> How uh, are you? Another way of proving the, the existence of the limit value uh, is by a characterization in the literature. We have the Mertens Zamir system of solution. With Rida, we have a paper uh, showing and characterizing the existence of the limit value for uh, product stochastic games, which are irreducible. And Rida also has a formula for the value of absorbing games, the limit value. So here, can you think of a method to a characterization of this in this spirit of a mertens solution combining with the with the Rida's formula for absorbing game, or something else related to Michael's approach to prove the uh, existence of the limit value in a standard stochastic game? This would be alternative options to try to do it, not with approximation, but trying directly to, to characterize the limit. Do you think it's possible or? I, I think it's very interesting to characterize the limit, but here somehow, um, I don't know how to do it. So that's why I'm using this approach. I mean, I think the advantage, advantage of this uh, approach is that it kind of separates uh, the problem of characterization and the problem of existence. Have, have you tried the, the approach? This is my question more or less, or you haven't? Um, I mean, I know the papers, but not so hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I know that. Uh... Yeah. No. J Jérôme, I, 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 I claimed uh, several years ago that I have a proof with this approach, and I think I have it, but I should write it. <laughs> but uh, uh, which gives the characterization, but, but it says nothing about uniform value, like uh, in this, you know. And I don't think no, but the point is that, okay, actually my, my target was not really uh, specifically absorbing games. So, okay, if, of course, in absorbing games, you may, um, you may get a characterization. 
but um, but uh, if you target, like for instance, uh, stochastic games with incomplete information, the general model, uh, where you have a collection of stochastic games and you just don't know which one you play, um, then characterization will be very difficult. I mean, uh, it's only recently that we get some characterization of limit value by uh, Michael's work, but uh, then trying something even more complicated, maybe. Uh, so, so that's why I think what is inefficient in this approach is that you you kind of um, decompose your problem into several sub problems that are easier. So you really target the existence, even you, if you want to be able to to do uh, to do it and to, to characterize it. So I, I, I think that uh, uh, this approach has also its its virtues. Well. And I would also uh, like to. To investigate the problem of maybe discretizing the new universal belief space. I think there is also interesting things to do that. And you can see that typically for uh, if you get a complicated universal belief space, it will be very hard to to so, so have a I couldn't hear you. You said I couldn't hear you. You say discretizing what? The universal belief space. Universal belief space. Okay. Because it's compact, so maybe uh, you can uh, you can do something like this. So here you see also a model of a uh, Repeat the game with incomplete information on both sides, where we have signals depending on the states. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the mistake. Yeah. This model should be can be attacked uh, this way, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, my, my my main goal is really to understand like when are the methods conjectures true, not not to target specifically absorbing games. Bruno. Yeah. Can you add signals to your models to, of absorbing? I don't know. Maybe you can. Public signals, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But what do you mean signals about what, by the way? No, but the point is that Actually, in uh, absor absorbing games, you there is only one non absorbing. Yeah, public uh, signals, yes, yeah. yes. But if it's not, you can you, the, yeah, the space will be, yeah. yeah. And uh, if you want uh, signals on actions, uh, it's yeah, then you go to the universal belief space, and then I don't know. Typically, I don't know. OK, thank you. So thank you, Hal. And hopefully, see you someday. Thanks, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye all. Bye. Galit, can you cut the? Bye bye. See you.